On May 10, 1972, the Fairchild Republic A-10 Thunderbolt had its maiden flight. The development of the aircraft began in the early 1960s, when the United States military was still relying on the Korean War-era Douglas A-1 Skyraider for its primary ground-attack aircraft. The Skyraider was certainly a capable aircraft for its air, but by Vietnam, its age was shown. In fact, the aircraft was ill-suited to the jungle campaign, and as a result, the U.S. Air Force and U.S. Navy lost 266 A-1s in combat, largely from small arms fire. Even before that point, Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara had called for the development of a tactical attack aircraft. Despite the more overt attractions of Match 2 aircraft, the Air Force focused on the Close Air Support CAS, mission. It needed something that was a modernized Sky Raider that could carry a heavy load of ordnance. had good endurance and could survive severe damage from ground fire. Between 1963 and 1969, extensive studies gradually refined the specifications for the new aircraft, and several prototypes were considered. In December 1972, the Fairchild Republic A-10 at Thunderbolt was deemed the winner, while GE was chosen to produce the aircraft's 30mm tank-busting GAU-8 gun a powerful weapon that had a very high muzzle velocity that was 20 times that of the 75mm gun fitted to some B-25s in World War II. In addition, the 30mm gun, which used rotating barrels, offered an unparalleled rate of fire for an aircraft weapon. Able to fire up to 4,200 rounds per minute, no attack aircraft in history has ever mounted a gun with the tank-killing capability of the GAU-8. Production of the A-10 Thunderbolt I began in 1972, and the aircraft officially entered service with the United States Air Force in 1977. The A-10's short takeoff and landing STOL, capability permitted it to operate from airstrips close to front lines. Service at forwarding base areas with limited facilities is possible because of the A-10's simplicity of design. It was first deployed during Operation Urgent Fury the 1983 American invasion of Grenada, and provided air cover for the United States Marine Corps, but did not fire their weapons. In fact, it wasn't until the Gulf War in 1991 that the aircraft took part in combat operations. A-10 successfully shot down two Iraqi helicopters with the GAU-8 and took part in numerous sorties against Iraqi Republican Guard units. Several A-10s were shot down by surface-to-air missiles, while nearly a dozen were hit by anti-air artillery rounds. Yet the aircraft performed well enough that the Air Force abandoned an idea to replace the A-10s with a close air support version of the F-16 Fighting Falcon. Over the past two decades, the A-10 has been deployed to subsequent operations in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Libya. However, for the past decade, the Air Force has wanted to divest some or all of its remaining 281 A-10 Warthogs. Supporters of the A-10 note that it offers excellent maneuverability at low air speeds and altitude while maintaining a highly accurate weapons delivery platform. The Thunderbolt IAV can loiter near battle areas for extended periods of time are capable of austere landings and operate under 1,000-foot ceilings, 303.3 meters, with 1.5 mile, 2.4 kilometers, visibility. In addition, its wide combat radius and short takeoff and landing capability <music> permit operations in and out of locations near front lines. Using night vision goggles, A-10C pilots can conduct their missions during darkness, while Thunderbolt eyes are also equipped with a night vision imaging systems, NVIS, goggle-compatible single-seat cockpits forward of their wings, helmet-mounted cueing systems, and a large bubble canopy that provides pilots all-around vision. <laughs>